In this exercise, we'll test the incremental changes we've made to the application by acting as a task processor end user to create a new claim, thus causing the claim processing process to be initiated, and then participating in the manual task handling procedures. Before we start, be sure any open browser windows are closed. Then click the Run button and wait for it to deploy the application and finally launch the application in the browser. Uh, okay, that's how we could do it, but I think that I deployed this before, so I'm going to run it from preview mode. So let me cancel this deployment. And then from the toolbar, click the preview button and enable preview mode. Once it shows Jetty 7.x embedded starting on port 8888, the embedded application server is ready and ready to run our application. So now we can either click the preview mode button or drop his context menu down and select preview and browser. I use the drop down approach for recording to make it easier for you to follow me. However, I typically just click the button. Log into the application as dmadmin with password of demo.demo. Notice we now have a Tasks top-level menu, so click it. So this is the page that we configured, and we call the Tasks page. It's a single page that has a results list widget that's tied to the task list data service that we named Claims Queue Query. You probably won't see any tasks in the list yet, since we have to create a claim first to trigger the business event that starts the claim processing stateful or manual process. Oh, and you might remember that I mentioned this search button and the work queue name field. These were added when the results list widget was bound to the task list query. It's designed to be used like this. First, the user enters part of the name of the work queue in the entry field. And then they click the search button. Another option is to pick the named document and work queue from the drop down list. And so, once a work queue has been selected, the results list will be filtered to only show the queue items from that work queue. However, even if you don't select any work queues, we can still use the search button as a kind of a refresh. It's even a common practice to change the label of the search field to reflect that functionality. Let's go back to the policy search page and open a policy for editing. Select the claims tab of our open policy and then click the add claim button to start a new claim. Let's enter the values for a new claim. I'm going to enter 03-21-2014 for the incident date. Then for where the accident happened, I'm going to use a Pleasanton office location. For amount, I'm entering 1000, but you can enter whatever you want. For vehicle, I'm going to select the VIN number for the Ford F-150. And let's check the vehicle in motion checkbox. Now we're ready to click the Create Claim button. The success message appears for a short time and then it disappears, revealing the new claim in the list of claims for this customer's policy. Notice now, when we go to the Task menu, the new task for the first approval activity of the process shows us the key details from the task, claim, and the policy. If it's not there at first, wait 20 seconds and refresh with the Search button. Sometimes we can get to the Tasks page before the Document of Services get a chance to run the process and update the work queue. Click on the task name for the task. In this case, that's First Approval. XCP Designer has configured this as a hyperlink to open the associated task page for us. So here's the task page showing us the details of a particular claim, with the three sections containing the details for the claim, policy, and vehicle information. The response drop-down list is disabled because the task hasn't been acquired yet. Acquiring a task means accepting responsibility to work on the task and that the task can't be completed by anyone else, or at least until another option is invoked. A task state of dormant indicates the current task. So let's click the Acquire button to acquire the task. The message that appears confirms that the task has been acquired, and then the page reloads. The state is updated to Acquired. The response drop-down list is then enabled, and the action buttons are updated to reflect that we can now action the task. Now let's look at the Claim Documents tab. So in the Claims Document tab, we can click the folder in the tree view. The same View Claim page that we configured before is shown next to the tree view. So we can review the details and notice the name is behind the create from template button. 
Also notice that the amount of the claim is currently 1,000. We're going to change that soon, so just remember that it's set to 1,000 now. After we've had a chance to review the details of the claim, select the Pre-Approve option from the Response drop-down. Then click the Complete button. I should point out that the other buttons won't work because we didn't configure those. After the Task Completed message goes away, we're directed back to the Tasks page. The list of tasks will be empty again. Even though the claims processing stateful process moves on to the second activity, the list will still need to be refreshed. Click the search button to refresh the list and the second approval task should appear. You may need to wait 10 or 20 seconds. Before opening the task, let's navigate to the policy search page and click the edit last policy button to check the status of the claim. Select the claims tab and confirm that the Claim status value has been updated to pre-approved. Now navigate back to the tasks page and open the second approval task and click the acquire button to acquire it. Let's select the history tab and review the steps that have been completed so far. The current step would be the one that's marked as dormant. It looks like I finished that prematurely between takes. Now select approve from the response drop-down list. Then click the complete button to finish the manual activity or task. Of course, the task completed message appears for a short time, and we're directed back to the tasks page again. There shouldn't be any more tasks to process, even if we click the search button. Navigate back to the policy that we're using and check that the claim status has been updated to approved. This was the response selected for the second approval activity. Let's click the add claim button again and create another claim. This time, let's use $2,000 for the amount so we can recognize it quickly. Initiate the claim processing process by clicking the Create Claim button. Now navigate to the Tasks page and right click on the new First Approval task. Context menu for Tasks page is special. It shows a default set of actions for a task. Selecting the View action opens the Task page, same as clicking on the Task Name hyperlink. Selecting Acquire acquires the task as the current user, but it doesn't open the page. If we then choose View, the task page opens in its acquired state, with the Response drop-down list enabled. The Context menu for Task Objects is a system-generated context menu, and it can't be modified. The list of available actions is dynamically defined based on the configuration of the task. For example, if the task has not been acquired, then the acquire action is provided. Or if the task has already been acquired, then the acquire button is hidden and the unassigned action is provided instead. A special case exists whereby if the activity doesn't have a page associated with it, then a complete action is provided. This is helpful in situations where the task is asking a user to do something outside of the application like updating another business application or making a phone call so they can carry out the task and complete it with the fewest mouse clicks and page changes later. Okay, so we've tested the claim processing, so let's close the browser window and return to the XCP Designer.